Hello. Hello and welcome, everyone. Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, tons of holidays this month to celebrate. So I know everyone is really busy. So thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to come on tonight or today and lose yourself in a brief visit to um, the middle of Spain. Thank you for joining us. As you may know, my name is Mara Walsh and I will be your host today. I'm excited to be hosting this virtual tour today because we have back an old friend who's done many tours with us in the past. Before we get started, I will go over a few housekeeping items. Please know that you are on Zoom webinar. Your video and your microphone are not activated and you will not be seen or heard. However, we do wanna interact with you. Uh, you can do this in two ways on Zoom, through the chat and the questions feature on the Zoom toolbar. If you have a question for Manuel, our tour guide, please put it in the Q&A um, on the Zoom toolbar. If you want to chat with me or just make a comment, that's where you would um, that's where you would write a chat. Those are not really addressed at the end of the presentation on the Q and A. So just do be mindful of that. If you want Manuel to answer a question, put it in the Q and A. If you're having audio or vi video issues, just put a note in the chat, and I'll help you once I'm done with the introduction. Uh, I'm located in the United States, uh, specifically between Philadelphia and New York. I mentioned this so that you know what time zone I'm in, because I do get comments from time to time about the time of the presentation. So it, it is 5 p.m. Eastern time zone right here with me. I realize that that's not your time where you are, all of you, but um, I'm hoping that you you know enough about the time zones to do the to do the math and figure out your own time zone. And hopefully the reminders from Zoom come at the appropriate time for you. As you may know by now, when we're not traveling virtually, I host groups on physical tours as well as help others plan their own family and group vacations. My tours are mainly adult only and open to all. And my summer trips are a combination of ages. Um, we, we really have teens through senior citizens. If you wanna follow our physical tours, please join my private Facebook group which is Girl Travel Tours, where you can travel right along with our groups. I have a full schedule of groups going out in 2024, so it will be great to take you along with us virtually. And of course, if you'd be interested in traveling with us, please don't hesitate to drop me an email or a text at uh, marawalsh at gmail.com, and we can talk about what uh, tour might be a good fit for you. As you may be aware, I started traveling with my group, uh, with my tour guide friends uh, virtually when COVID struck back in 2020, and we've been doing it for the last two and a half years. Um, these virtual tour presentations have helped many tour directors earn some much needed income when they were not making any income and have kept the excitement of travel alive for so many of us. So they've served two purposes quite well. We've done more than 80 virtual tours and the recordings are available on my website, my YouTube channel, and my Facebook page. Currently, we do not have any virtual tours scheduled on the calendar for 2024, but I have high hopes to add some more tours coming up in the next year. I have a note out to all of my guides and we will see what we can put on the calendar so that we can keep you traveling virtually as well. If you want to be sure to get an email alerting you of these next presentations and our group tours, please go to girltraveltours.com and just submit the form and that will put you on our newsletter list. Okay, so let's review. Um, I, actually, I have a poll and I, I hope to goodness that I've actually put it up properly because I don't even remember making this poll. This presentation was... Um, rescheduled a couple times. So I want to make sure that I, you know what, I, I don't think I have the poll. Let's see. We'll see. Uh, let me launch it and see if it's, if it's a good poll, we'll use it. So the question is, what is your connection to Toledo and La Mancha? Toledo, as Manuel will say, and La Mancha. So it's, I've been and I loved it. I have a trip booked. I plan to go in the future. 
I have no set plans, but I'm interested in the locations or I am solely interested in experiencing it virtually. I can actually say that I've been to Toledo this year with some of you. It was a wonderful trip. I absolutely love the town and we're gonna learn a lot about it, but it's a it's an, a wonderful medieval town. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna end the poll and show the results. Hopefully everybody has put in their answers. I see it's still going up and down. Um, so it looks like, most people that have responded, about 30% have been and loved it. That's a lot, I think, for, for our group. And then there's a decent amount that have no set plans but are interested in the location virtually. Probably half of our audience is um, just interested in the virtual location. So that's good, Manuel. You have a lot of work to do by sharing how wonderful it is so that we can turn that um that 8% of people who are interested or planning to go in the future will will raise that for them and, and maybe they'll even go with you. Um, so I just stopped sharing that. Hopefully you don't see it anymore on your screen. If you do, you could just press the button and it will go away. Um, and as you well know, a tour would not be complete without a fantastic tour director. And today we have back Manuel. Manuel has done several virtual tours um, for us. They can be found on my website and also on YouTube. They included Madrid, um, the Prada Museum, Gaudi's Barcelona, Northern Spain, Andalusia, the Canary Islands, Portugal, and probably some others that I have not remembered. But um, I will share in the chat with you and also during the Q&A how you can leave a tip for Manuel. Um, if you appreciate this presentation and the guide's knowledge that's brought to you, um, we appreciate a tip back to him. All the tips go directly to the tour guide minus the Zoom operating expenses. So he will benefit from this presentation as well. So today I want to welcome back Manuel to join us. Um, hello and welcome, Manuel. I'm glad to see you again. And I am so glad to see you home safe after a very busy tour season. And hopefully you'll get a couple weeks off and you can recuperate a little bit. If you're ready, you can take the controls and share your screen and then start your presentation. How are you doing? Yes, he hello, Mara. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me uh, again in this uh, virtual adventure. I'm fine, as you said, you know, after a very long season, very busy and very nice, uh, having some, some, some time off at home. I wish you everyone, you know, a very happy Christmas, uh, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry, my voice is a little bit uh, funny because I got a little bit cold this day, but I, I, I think I could, I could make it. So, uh, buenas noches desde España, buenas noches desde Madrid. I'm going to share my, my screen now. Okay, I hope everyone now is seeing the, the presentation. And um, so today we are going to visit this wonderful uh, city uh, called Toledo. If you want to pronounce it correctly in, in Spanish, I know many of you might say Toledo uh, because it's the way normally you speak in English. And the same name like those cities in, in um, Ohio. Uh, I think it's Ohio, Toledo, right? Yes. Uh, and also, we are going to take a look uh, about La Mancha region. Toledo is like the capital of this region. So let's go. Let's go to do it. Okay. Well, first of all, to give you a little introduction of Spain for those of you that uh, haven't uh, come yet to visit us. Well, this is a kind of funny map of the of Spain, the Iberian Peninsula. We have these uh, little uh, pictures uh, about the main cities like the capital in the center of Madrid, of Valencia with the paella in the Mediterranean coast, Andalusia in the south, Barcelona in the northeast, of the Guggenheim and the Santiago Cathedral in the north. But we are going to a region which is south of Madrid, exactly pretty much over there, eh? south of Madrid, but north of Andalusia. In the next uh, map, you could see it better. This is the division uh, or political uh, division of the country with the different regions. So you could see Madrid in the center of the country and, and uh, Castilla-La Mancha Autonomous Region, as we call it in Spain, is this area, uh, south of Madrid. 
when we are going to uh, see better with this other map. And you have the flag of this autonomous region there to the right with the castle, because it's part of the former kingdom of Castilla. We have uh, five provinces. The extension is about 3,000 square miles. It's the, the third largest region in Spain, the 16% of the total territory. Population is not that big. It's only about 2 million people. Uh, so the ninth position in Spain, only the 4% of the total population of Spain. We have 48 million people in Spain. And when some of their fat, the GDP in 2020 was uh, 39,600 millions of uh, euros of the US. Okay. So let's take a look a little bit about uh, some of the four UNESCO World Heritage Sites that we have in this region. First of all, uh, the capital, Toledo, uh, a UNESCO World Heritage City since 1986. Uh, uh, this is a beautiful view of the city, the impressive Gothic Cathedral that we are going to see later, and the Alcázar, the fortress. Then the city of Cuenca, the capital of other of the provinces, is also an historic town since 1996, part of the UNESCO list with the cathedral, these very unique, we call it the hanging houses because they are just, you know, hanging there in the cliff. And a very interesting a contemporary art museum. In the, in the eastern part of the region, in the provinces of Cuenca and Albacete, we have these uh, prehistoric rock arts it's called like the Mediterranean Basin of the Iberian Peninsula with caves uh, that dating back from 8,000 till three uh, and 500,000 years ago, like this one in Cuenca, Abrigo de Selva Pascuala, or this other one in Albacete, La Solana de las Covachas. Also, you have one of the entrances, one of these caves, Cueva del Niño, all in the province of Albacete. And in the province of Ciudad Real, to the west of the region, we have another uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site dedicated to heritage of Mercury, because Almaden was a very important uh, city where they were mining Mercury during centuries. Also, we are going to take a little look very briefly to other of the capitals, Guadalajara, where we have a very beautiful Renaissance style palace, the Palacio del Infantado, or the Gothic Cathedral, the Cathedral of Sigüenza, and this impressive castle of Zafra that it was filmed in the Game of Thrones TV series, among other many locations in Spain. La Mancha itself is not the entire region, it's this area that is in the center to the west of the, of the region. That is the, the region that we call La Mancha, okay? where the ships that uh, we used to make the very delicious manchego cheese, the vines of the Valdepeñas wine, and obviously the windmills of Don Quixote. Also, in the region, we have several natural areas, two important national parks, and seven natural parks. The national parks are located in this area in the west, in between Toledo and Ciudad Real. The first one, since 1973, is the one called Tablas de Daniel, pretty much a foot plain wetlands. And the other one is called Cabañeros since 1995, and it's pretty much about an Iberian Mediterranean forest. Okay, that was an overview of the region, and now we are going to see better with this introductory video uh, of this wonderful location. I hope you, you enjoy it. We are going to see here some of those uh, 
landscape, natural areas, capital, cathedral of Toledo, for instance, Roman ruins like this one in Segovia. It's a lake, a lake in the middle of the picture. Castles, former fortress, none of the castles that was the former kingdom of Castilla, monasteries, more fortress like this one in Almanza, windmills in different locations. More Roman remains, Carranque, the natural park of Cabañeros. Fortress del Calavista, Monastery of Clef, Renaissance style. This couple of Quintana is my hometown, my family's hometown. Guadalajara, one of the other capitals. We put it in a little town, in the middle of the Monday. And Albacete, one of the capitals of the region. And Cuenca, the city of the city. The lakes of Indera, very beautiful area, and of La Real, and the monastery of Chester, the former fortress in Alarcos. Some beautiful and small town like that. So this was a little bit of an overview of Castilla La Mancha, as they say, a place in your life. Now we are going to start uh, with the visit, the virtual visit to the capital, the city of Toledo. It's not a very uh, big city, it's the capital of the province and also the capital of the region, but only has 85,500 people. It was founded in the fifth century before Christ by the Carpetani, uh, people uh, that was living here before the Romans. And very briefly, uh, we are going to uh, have a little timeline. Okay, uh, after the Carpetani, the Roman uh, arrived in the one in the in the in the second at the end of the second century before Christ, and they founded the city of Toledo. Then the the Visigoths they came in the fifth century. They put the capital of this Visigoth kingdom in Toledo. The Martins later in the 711, 11 they invited us. And they gave the name of Tula y Tula to the city. Finally, in the year 1085, Alphonse VI of Castilla and Leon reconquered the city for the Christians. In 1522, Charles V made Toledo his, uh, his imperial capital. But sadly, uh, quite soon later, in 1561, the capital was moved to Madrid. So Toledo declined a little bit as a main city. In uh, 1936, uh, during the Civil War, Toledo had a very important uh, uh, event with the siege of the Alcázar. And finally, in the modern times, it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage City in the 1986. So let's take a look to the city. This is the the, the map of the city, the city of the three cultures, uh, one, one of the nicknames, uh, because uh, during the medieval ages, uh, it's said that the three cultures, the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jews, they were living kind of harmony uh, and uh, sharing knowledge in the, in the city of Toledo. We are going to see the, I'm, I, I've divided the city in different parts. So first we are going to see the walls and the bridges around the river Tagus, the longest of the Iberian Peninsula, having the mouth in Lisbon. Then we'll see the central area, the cathedral and the city center. And finally, the Jewish quarter. Okay. Those are the three parts of the city I'm, I'm going to take. We are going to start with the, with the walls. So we have the Puerta Bisagra Gate is the most important of the walls, so of the gates in, in the wall. And also we'll check a little bit of the walls. Then we're going to see the two most important bridges, the one of Alcantara to the east and the one of San Martin to the west of the city. 
And finally, the impressive views of the city from the other side of the Tajo River. Let's go. This is the Puerta Bisagra. It's a, a very monumental, a very important gate built in the 16th century. At the time of the, of the Spanish Empire, Charles V decided to build it uh, to give the access. This is the imperial uh, coat of arms of Charles V. Once you cross the gate, you get into a little, a little uh, patio with a statue of this uh, king. And then in front, you have this uh, other gate with these two little towers. And this is the exit. Uh, once you get the exit, you are already in the old section of the city of Toledo. The walls of the city, uh, they were built in between the 8th and the 10th century, so medieval walls. Another view. And this is another of the uh, several uh, gates that we have. The one uh, to the left called Puerta del Sol, Sans Gate. It was built in Mudejar style in the 14th century. And Mudejar is the, this style uh, of made by Muslims even when they were living in, in Christian territory. And then to the right, we have the oldest one, the Puerta de Alfonso VI, Alfonso VI Gate, from the 10th century. Outside the walls in front of Puerta Gisagra, we have this wonderful uh, building, uh, Renaissance style from the 16th century, the former Hospital de Tavera. Nowadays it's a museum with a wonderful uh, classic Renaissance style uh, patio. Let's go to one of the bridges, uh, the one to the east, is called the Alcantara Bridge. Alcantara is an Arabic word that means the bridge. So saying Alcantara Bridge is repeating the same thing. It's the bridge, the bridge. Yeah, but what is the name has? This is a build, uh, it was built by the Romans in the third century, the, the, the basement, but it was rebuilt several times in between the 10th and the 13th century, and also at the, at the end of the 18th century. Yeah. This is the, uh, the gate that was built precisely in the 18th century that gives the access to the bridge. In the other side, we have this uh, uh, kind of uh, tower, uh, a fortification. And through that fortification, through that tower, we get into the wall, and that is the gate of Alcantara that, uh, that gets, uh, gives you the access to the city. In the other side of the river, in front of this, bri of this bridge, we have a, a castle uh, from the 11th century, uh, 11th century, San Servando Castle. Now uh, it's in use for conventions, ceremonies, events, uh, not anymore real uh, a, a military fortress. And we are moving now to the west, uh, to San Martin's Bridge, and it was built in between the 13th and the 14th century. This is another view uh, with the city at the, at the background. At the top of the hill, we will see the walls of uh, the monastery of uh, San Juan de los Reyes. Also, it has uh, the access, uh, you, you see it to the right, and to the left, you have the access to the city. Right? And now you're gonna see the back part of both of the accesses connecting with the bridge. And uh, from the bridges, we need to cross the river to the other side. In the other side of the river, we have several viewpoints uh, that are characteristics. Uh, when you are having a tour, for sure, they are going to take you there to have this wonderful view of the city, of the old section of the city of Toledo. In the old section of the city, they only live about 15,000. Right? And it looks like a fertile city. Right? Another view for another viewpoints with the Alcázar to the right, the spire of the cathedral just in the middle, the different domes and towers of the different monasteries and churches in the in the in the center of the city. And this is a final uh, view with the sunset. This view was captured by one of the most important uh, painters that we had in Toledo and in Spain. Uh, called El Greco. He he really painted the same view. Eh? It, it's a, 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 um, a painting uh, that is uh, 
house in, in the Greco Museum in the city. It's called View and Plan of Toledo. It was painted in the 1608. In the other side of the river, we have this area with a lot of mansions or recre recreational estates, very big houses, very, very, very expensive. Some of those houses might cost 6 million euros, 8 million euros they are really, really expensive because of the view, obviously. In many of them, we have hotels, we have uh, restaurants. And just to take a look about that, we have a beautiful Parador. So you are staying in Toledo overnight, you could go to the Parador and have the views. So let's take a look. They are called Cigarrales. Cigarrales came from the, uh, the little animal called Cicada that made this sound in the summertime. The restaurant, hotel, facilities, good food, Castilla La Mancha, uh, well, Spain has a wonderful astronomy. If you are coming to visit, you could look for one of those cigarrales, one of those hotels or restaurants. Enjoy your time. Okay, that was the magic of the cigarrales de Toledo. Now we are going to uh, visit the city center. Uh, with uh, what is the cathedral and some other sites. We are going to start with the main square in the old section called Zocodover Square. And nearby Zocodover, we have three important sites. The Alcázar, actually the Army Museum of Spain. The Santa Cruz Museum, a very important museum in the city and the former uh, mosque of the Cristo de la Luz. This is uh, the Plaza Zocodover, some uh, views, full of restaurants, little shopping. It's a meeting point eh, for the locals and also for many visitors. This is how it looks when they have the main festivities in Toledo, which is the Corpus Christi. Uh, in, in June. Let's move from Zocodover to the Alcázar. The Alcázar, uh, uh, the building we have now, it was built in the 16th century, at the time of the Emperor Charles V, but in the same hill there was a Roman fortress, a muslin, also fortification. Eh? So it was always the place of the city to control eh? uh, the, the people coming, the invaders. Now, this is the Army Museum of the Spanish Military. This is the main entrance. Has a beautiful Renaissance style courtyard with a statue of Charles V, uh, the fifth in the middle, the emperor. Let's take a look. Have a huge collection of armors and weapons, and even uh, certain artifacts of the military history of Spain. And not Spain, only. So, uh, a good visit to, to paint in, in, in Toledo. And Manuel? When you're yes. going to run the videos, um, if you could turn them down quite a bit, the most of the audience can't hear your vo voice over the videos. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, yes. No problem. Yes. So the next is the, the Museum of Santa Cruz. Uh, this, uh, it was a former hospital from the 16th century. This is the main, the main entrance. The main uh, entrance over there to the left with the detailed uh, uh, decoration, uh, some of the rooms, 
beautiful, you know, ceilings and made up of wood. Some of the rooms to the left. This is the uh, Renaissance also style courtyard. The main staircase. And some of the most important pieces we have there, we have a very impressive Roman mosaic from the fourth century called the Four Seasons Mosaic. This white marble well uh, parapet uh, from the Massing period, uh, year 1032 and this uh, uh, beautiful uh, Immaculada of uh, El Greco. From there, we could move in the same area of the Codover uh, till the Cristo de la Luz Mosque that was built in this Mudejar Muslim style in the year 1999. This is interior and the city. From the area of the cathedral, so from, from, the, from the area of Sokodover, sorry, we are moving now to the cathedral. Yeah. And later to Santo Tome Church. And finally, we'll visit El Greco Museum. This is the impressive uh, skyline, to say something, of the Cathedral of Toledo. The whole name is called, is Catedral Primada de Santa Maria. Primada uh, means the most important cathedral in Spain because the, the, the Archbishop, the Cardinal of Toledo is the most important in the Catholic uh, Church uh, hierarchy. It was built as a Gothic cathedral in between the 13th and the 15th century has the nickname of Dives Toletana, the rich or the richest of Toledo, because of the, of the immense collection of art and paintings and uh, artifacts uh, they have in, inside. This is another view of uh, one of the main entrances uh, with the tower of the bells, the bell tower, and the Archbishop Palace to the left. Some other of the entrances, the appreciation of the Gothic styling of both of them. This is the Gothic, the interior with the, with the beautiful stained glass windows. Another part of the nave with the choir at the back. This is the, the, the fence that gives the access to the main altar, a very baroque, uh, you know, Production. This is the main altar. Other of the important parts of the cathedral is the sacristy. Uh, not only because it's huge and very impressive because of the uh, of the very important collection of art that they have there. In, inside the cathedral, they have a museum of the cathedral with very, very important paintings, many of them from El Greco himself. This is called El Espolio. Uh, it was painted by El Greco and it is located in the in, in, in the main uh, uh, um, wall of the of the of the sacristy and the ceiling it was painted by you know Luca Giordano, uh, an Italian artist in the 1700s. It's really impressive. And this is called El Transparente. It's a Baroque addition that was uh, built in 1700 as well, uh, just to give some light to the back part of the of the of the cathedral. It's very very elaborated as you could as you could see. This is the courtyard of the of the cathedral, but it's, it's going to be much better to take a look inside. By this virtual tour, you could, this is the, the sacristy, the paintings of El Greco, organ of the cathedral, 
details of the, uh, the birch the fence of the main altar. An overview of the main altar and the main nave. The ceiling painted by Luca Giordano in the sacristy. And this is the transparente at the part of the main altar. This is the choir with this beautiful image of the of the Madonna. And the access to the cloister. This is the refectorium. And the bell tower. Other uh, lateral naves of the cathedral, and a view of the main altar. This is the transparent, the details uh, of the sculptures there, the giving lights. This. Uh, back part of the keyboard. Well, that's just the impressive uh... Gothic Cathedral of Toledo, one of the most important in Spain, together with the one in Sevilla and the one in Bruges, the third largest in the country. And then from the cathedral, not far away from the cathedral, we have the Santo Tomé Church, which is a very a small building, a very small church from building between the 11th and the 14th century in this uh, Mudejar style, this Muslim style, uh, but it's very important because it houses a, a, a very important painting from El Greco. This is the interior of the, of the church, uh, the very uh, characteristic tower, uh, this Mudejar style tower. And this is the painting, the burial of the Lord of God that was painted by El Greco is probably one of his masterpieces. The Lord of God, of God was a nobleman that was living in Toledo some centuries before, and he paid for the construction of this church, and he was also like a mecenas of the city. This is a detail of the painting, but briefly we could take a look inside. This is the signature of a Greco, the Manico Theotokopouli, because he was Greek. It's the painting in the main uh, nave of the access of the church. And this is the church, uh, the church itself. Honestly, most of the people, when they are visiting this Santo Tomé Church, they are visiting and seeing the, the painting and not that much uh, the church, but um, still. So that was Santo Tomé Church. And from there, uh, we will walk some more to El Greco Museum. This is, you know, the outside of the building. It was opened in 1910. The building, it was built in 1910. Now they have a modern access because it was renovated several times. The last time in the 1990. This is one of the former accesses 
also the access to the to the to the patio courtyard and some of the galleries but before we are going to learn something about el greco el greco fue is came from greek that's why we call the greek the greco he went to italy to learn with Michel with michelangelo the manierism and finally he arrived to toledo in 1577 his first uh, masterpiece was La Trinidad, that now is in the Prado Museum. He tried to work for the King Philip II in El Escorial Palace, but Philip II didn't like that much El Greco, so he stayed in Toledo uh, making uh, pieces, masterpieces for the nobility, for the churches, for the monasteries. Domenico Theotokopouli, very difficult to pronounce, that's why uh, the people, they gave him this nickname, the Greek, El Greco. In the museum, we have this painting that we already uh, saw before, the view and plan of Toledo, one of the masterpieces, but also some many others, um, portraits of the apostles. There's a series of the apostles uh, that was uh, painted by El Greco, like the the Lagrimas of San Pedro, the tears or St. Peter's in tears of this, you know, Jesus as our savior. But also another uh, portrait of the novel, novel, novel man of the time, like Antonio de Covarrubias, or this other that was painted by uh, someone later on, uh, uh, Raimundo de Madrazo in the 1900s, you know, but following the, uh, the, the El Greco influence. Mm -hmm. Bien, from this area uh, near to the cathedral, we are moving to the Jewish quarter. The Jewish quarter of Toledo was one of the most important Jewish quarter in Spain. Uh, the, maybe some of you know that the, the Jews were expelled from Spain in the 1492 by the Catholic monarch. Uh, so many of them, they needed to convert to the Catholicism or just left. So we are going to see uh, a couple of three places here the um, Synagogue of the Transito, which is also the Sephardic Museum. The Jews from Spain, they were called, or they are called Sephardis, because Spain, uh, for the Jews, were, were, was named Sephardat, so from Sephardat, Sephardic. Also, we are going to see another impressive synagogue, the one of Santa Maria La Blanca, that was later turned into a church. And finally, the San Juan de los Reyes Monastery that was uh, commissioned by the Catholic monarchs. So let's start with the first one. This is a building uh, from the 14th century that houses uh, nowadays the Sephardic Museum. It's not a very big museum. They have temporary exhibitions. This is an overview of both the, uh, the former synagogue and the museum. A view, the, a view of the main nave, the impressive ceiling made out of wood, this artesonado ceiling, some details of the decoration with these geometrical and Arab uh, uh, designs, but also you could see the uh, Jews, the Hebrew uh, writing. Uh, Then from uh, La Sinagoga del Tránsito, just by walking a few, a few minutes, we'll arrive to the Santa Maria La Blanca Synagogue. This is the access. This is the main building. It's really impressive. That's why the name, La Blanca, the white, uh, because this uh, white decoration. This is the different beautiful columns with the traditional muslin uh, style arches. It was turned uh, later on into a, into a church. So that's why we have these also Christian symbols and some other decorations that were added later. Some details of the mosaic in the, in the floor and uh, the decorations in the, in the columns. And this uh, wonderful, uh, door. 
from uh, Santa Maria la Blanca, we could visit this last uh, of the of the sites in Toledo is the monastery of San Juan de los Reyes, San John of the Kings, should be the translation. It was commissioned by the Catholic monarchs in the 15th century, at the end of the 1400s. This is the main entrance. The beautiful Gothic style, uh, and Gothic to Renaissance, I would say, uh, because uh, this is a combination of both, courtyard. But let's take a look inside better. It was commissioned to commemorate, it was built to commemorate a battle in the 1476, won by the Catholic mourners, the Battle of Toro. It was built by the architect Juan Guas in Gothic uh, Isabel style. There's decorations with the names of the kings, uh, Isabel and Ferdinand. This is a cloister, this is a later addition and it's really unique. The details of the sculptures. And the gargoyles, the gargoyles that are a characteristic of these Gothic buildings are very visible in this building. And then um, I, I'd like to end this uh, visit, this virtual visit to the city. Toledo has a lot of places to see, uh, but I, I, wa I want to just do to take you to the most important buildings and to the most important sites. But I don't want to finish uh, the visit of Toledo of the city without telling you something about the traditions. The most of the sweet traditions that I love, especially at Christmas, because it's one of the gifts that normally we, we offer, is the marzipan. The marzipan was originated in Toledo with a very old recipe dating back around 1212. It's pretty much almond and sugar and honey, a mob of, a mob of calories, but very, very good. If you, if you haven't tried, try marzipan from Toledo. Another important tradition here is the Toledo steel eh, for uh, making swords and armors. Uh, a long history, it had a very important reputation because the way they, 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 they made the swords, the armors, it was really, really important, very good. Uh, gave, gave to the sword uh, flexibility and also strength at the, at the same time, apparently because of the qualities of the of the river uh, of the river of the water of the river uh. so those are some of the souvenirs that you could buy in toledo any kind of replica of former historical shores or armor or knives and then this other uh, jewelry and craft called damascene because originally came with the muslins from Damascus in Jordan. And uh, well, it's a tradition, it's inlaid um, silver and gold with uh, with steel or, or iron, depends. And it gives, they make beautiful uh, jewelry, like that one, or any kind of uh, uh, crafts, like plates or little boxes or anything. Really beautiful. And finally, the most important tradition, the most important festivity that we have in Toledo is the Corpus Christi. That's why the city of Toledo is a twin sister uh, with Toledo in Ohio, but also with Corpus Christi in Texas eh, because of this special uh, festivity. That is not only in Toledo, it's also in the entire region of Castilla-La Mancha in several uh, towns. We are going to take a look, a look to those uh, special celebrations. These festivities are very important 
in many in many cities like the capital, where, but also in this uh, city of Camuñas in Toledo, they make this uh, sawdust kind of uh, carpets eh? just for the day. Eh? This is just a uh, ephemeral piece of art, uh, really impressive. And then they 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 run the processions, you know, uh, through those uh, carpets that they just uh, prepare in the in, in the morning. Also, they have these uh, commemorations with two uh, characters. They have the the, the evil the, the demons representing the the, the bad the evil and the, the the dancers representing the good eh? so it's always like the good prevails over the bad eh? so over, the, over the evil and in toledo city eh, the corpus christi is a big celebration they cover the streets with these eh, fabrics with decoration with flowers all over the city they have this immense a long uh, procession uh, where they they show the monstrance of the of the of the cathedral and it's a very very important event in june in the city of toledo so those are some of the traditions in toledo and the region of castilla la mancha and finally, we are going to uh, uh, talk a little bit and we are going to see something about this region, particularly uh, in the center uh, to the west of Castilla-La Mancha called La Mancha proper. A place in your life. See, it's not the entire region, it's the area that is painted in, in green color. And it's very famous, probably uh, you know this La Mancha name because of the novel of uh, written by Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote de la Mancha. The novel was uh, written in the 1605, uh, published in the 1605, and is considered uh, one of a kind, the first novels in the history of literature. The main characters, uh, well, these are cartoons from my childhood. There was a TV series uh, with these cartoons. Don Quixote, the dreamer knight, uh, uh, and also Sancho Panza, the squire, uh, with the foot on the earth, and Rocinante, the, the, the horse of Don Quixote. In La Mancha also, they, uh, they have a very important tradition with gastronomy, some very well-known products. I'm sure some of you have tried uh, the manchego cheese. The manchego cheese from La Mancha uh, came from the, from the ship, this uh, particular breed called uh, Oveja Manchega. And it has a appellation of origin, it's protected uh, appellation of origin. Also, we have a very big wine region, one of the largest wine regions in Europe. Uh, called Val de Peñas. It's a kind of a table wine, not very, very important like other regions in Spain, like Rioja. The main uh, grapes producing Val de Peñas wine are Airen, but also they use Verdejo, Chardonnay, Merlot, Garnacha, several up to 12 uh, they could use to produce the Val de Peñas wine. And another very important product produced in La Mancha and one with a unique quality is the saffron. The saffron of La Mancha is said one of the best in the world, uh, maybe together with the one coming from Iran. Uh, and it's expensive, but probably not as expensive as, as, uh, in other regions in the world. So if you are coming to Spain, go to the supermarket and buy saffron, check that was produced here in La Mancha, and it's going to be much cheaper than at home, probably. Also protected. And finally, I'm going to stop at the end in my hometown, my family hometown. It's one of those traditional windmills uh, type of village. And so we are going to take a look of, to one of those uh, windmills. First, we are going to take a look in general to this region, to this particular um, county of La Mancha.
the land, land of the windmills because of Don Quixote. Very beautiful uh, villages with uh, charming. Very spectacular, spectacular landscape with the capitals, the castles, the gastronomy. We have a lot of tours, wine tours, regional cuisine, the local exquisite products, accommodations, hotels, all over, rural homes, sport activities. And this could be down as a route following the steps of Don Quixote. Castilla -La Mancha. So finally, to end with the tour, I like to uh, uh, to introduce you to my hometown, Campo de Cristana, that is uh, called also Tierra de Gigantes, Land of the Giants, because of the windmills. And we are going to visit precisely one of those windmills. Owners of the wind, they turned the harvest into bread. Sustenance of those who created them almost five centuries ago. Perfect machines, gears of human geniuses. Stones that sound when rolling. Grinding starts when the blades are turning. Fed with gold, the grain from the ground washed with sweat. Fruit of the work of our people and their only wealth. A treasure guarded with care in humble haystacks and ostentatious palaces. The treasure of Kryptana. Well, that was my family hometown. I was born there, in fact. My family moved to Madrid when I was less than one year old. So you are invited to visit. If you are coming to Madrid or to Spain, just uh, give me a call. And finally, I want to end this uh, this virtual tour with a kind of funny, very funny scene of probably this movie that some of you remember, The Man of La Mancha, you know, with Peter Toole and Sophia Loren, is the scene when uh, Don Quixote fight the the witness uh, and that's going to be the end of the of the tour do you see him who oh, the great enchanter and thou not see what a monstrous giant of infamous repute whom i intend to encounter it's a windmill a giant a windmill a giant Cause I'll not see the four great arms are whirling at his back. Giant? Exactly. How long since we sallied forth? About two minutes. So soon will I engage in brave, unequal combat. Hold there, power monster! Cease the knocking of thy craven knees and prepare to do battle. I swear your grace by my wife's little black mustache. That is my ah! wife! Your grace!
but poor Don Quixote. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Muchas gracias a todos por por for for watching, and I hope you you enjoyed this little tour in Toledo. So funny. That was very, very comical. Nice way to end the tour, Manuel. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So I'm not sure if you're ready to go to Q&A or if you need a, a moment, but while you start to look at the questions, I'll just remind folks that um, if you haven't left a tip and you want to live a, leave a tip for Manuel, there is plenty of ways to do so. They're listed on the slide. If you don't want to interrupt the tour right now and go off of the uh, go outside of Zoom, I will be sending a follow up email tomorrow um, about this same time, which will give you a link to send a tour, uh, send a tip to the the tour guide, Manuel. So um, uh, if you're ready, Manuel, we can kind of attack the Q&A and you can read the ones that you can address and we can go from there. Yeah, yes, I, I, I guess that. Okay, so let's, let's, let's see. Okay, Valden uh, asking me, why is the population so low? Only 4% of the country. Well, because this is a very extensive territory with no big cities. Uh, in Spain, normally we tend to live in big cities by the coast or in the big capitals. So yes, that's the main reason. Is the same, Greg, is asking me, is the same region as uh, what was once Castilla and Leon? Um, well, Castilla and Leon uh, is the area north of Madrid. The area to the south is Castilla-La Mancha, but then both of them uh, made uh, part of the kingdom of Castilla and Leon. And that was later di divided in two regions. Yeah? Uh, what does cigarrales mean in English? Well, cigarrales, the name of the of the of the houses, the beautiful houses in Toledo, it comes from the English, um, the, the name of the English animal, the, the this insect called cicada, cicada. These little insects that they make sounds in the in the summer. I think you say cicada, right? So from cicada in Spanish is cigarra. So from cigarra, cigarrales, because in summertime they make noise there in that in that part of the of the river. A question, if I were to visit Toledo or La Mancha, how many days would you recommend and will, will the mission educate about the broad as well as local Spanish history? Well, if you are visiting Toledo La Mancha, probably you will need, I will say, you know, three, four days ma maximum. You, you, you could spend more, obviously, because they are different capitals, but probably four days for Toledo and the area near to Toledo. That would, I think, is enough. Sara says, I'm wondering the connection to the synagogues and the Arabic architecture. Thanks. It's because you know the, the, the Arabs they remain in the in the Christian kingdoms once those territories were taken back for the Christians. So the Arabs they remained for a couple of centuries and they were able to to, to work and build as they, they used to do. And that is the we call the Mudejar style. The Mudejar style. Um I visited a very simple home and courtyard purport to be where I recall live in Toledo when I was there in 1969. Is that sign gone now? Mm. I think, I'm not totally sure of that. I think that is uh, not visitable anymore. Uh, the former home of the record. The month of the Corpus Christi is June, happens in June. Um, which province is Aragon? Aragon is a different province. It's in the northwest uh, part, in between Madrid and in Catalonia. Uh, Jen, uh, can tourists enter the caves to view the paintings in Albacete? Uh, in San Oden, yes, some of the caves are visible, but you need to arrange uh, the visits, not all of them and not all the time. Marianne is asking, uh, how did the civil war affect this area of Spain? Did they hide the artwork? Well, this area was uh, taken uh, by what well, was in the middle of the conflict for a while, and then was taken by the by the troops of Franco. But there was an important battle in Toledo, so there was a siege of Toledo by uh, uh, held by the Republicans. Okay? That was a one. Well, it was one of the important events in the in the civil war. Karen, are bullfights still happening in Spain? Yes, bullfighting is happening still in Spain. In, in many cities, not every time, not everywhere, but in, in many cities. 
I'm visiting in 2025 and might like to hire you as a tour guide. Well, that's, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> Maybe you could connect with Susan. I need to, uh, in I don't know, 2025, 2024, uh, I'm quite busy already. But yes, maybe you could connect uh, through Mara with me. Victoria is asking, do you have a senior tip or is just, uh, I think this is question is for Mara. So the question is, do you have a senior trip or is it just for students? We travel with all different ages. Mostly my trips are for adults and in general, mostly retired adults or, or folks that have the time and um, means to travel. So, um, however, we do, we do, and so does Manuel in the summer months, especially um, do some trips for students. But most of our trips are adult, um, adult travelers. And that does bring us to the end of the questions. I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And Manuel, it's been great to see you. It's been a long time since uh, we got together on Zoom. So thanks so much. And again, everybody, you can check out um, as we add more virtual tours, we'll be adding them to our website, girltraveltours.com. So have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye, Manuel. Nice to see you thank again. Thank you, Mara. Thank you all and happy Christmas to everyone. Bye.